Hello everyone, this is General Hand Grenade. Welcome to my war room in Prince George, British Columbia. This is another in our continuing series of uh, Global War 1936 to 1945 expansion sets. And this one is called Oil Wars. The last one I did was called uh, Commanders. And it was a, a fairly simple um, scheme of rules to, uh, to put into your game. Like a, it, it, it was a cool set and everything. But it, it, you didn't need to have the rule book right next to you for, you know, for the rest of time in order to play that one. This one is not like that, though. And I, I did have a conversation the other day with Doug at Historical, Historical Board Gaming about um, this type of thing. Uh, specifically about the complexity of games and how he found, in, uh, and he would probably know more than most of us, right, about people who uh, play the game just because he sells so many products to to people like us, right? He, me and you. But um, he he was saying, and, and I agree with him, that, that, that there's two kinds of players. There's the, the players who want things simple. You know, they want to play the game as simple as possible and as easy as possible. They want good games, but they want them to be simple. And then there's players who want their game to be more complex, like a lot of complexity. And the more complex, the better. And I'm kind of like that. I, I'm more of the complex one. Um, but it's it's hard though because you know like when you're thinking of uh, playing a game like Global War You kind of want to get a group of people you know five to ten people that, that like to play the game So it's hard to find that many people that are into the amount of complexity um, to, to, to put in uh, Schemes like this one oil wars because this one is perhaps the most complex one that I've seen um, if it isn't, then it, it surely rivals the other one. <laughs> I'm not sure what it would be, but this one is extremely difficult. Um, it, it's not hard to grasp. It's just uh, the amount of effort that you're going to need to, um, and the amount of thought that you're going to need to, to, do, to do this properly uh, and to do it to your advantage. It, it, it's going to take an awful lot of your time. Um, like, I was thinking to myself, man, as I'm reading these rules over and over again in, in preparation over the last couple of days to make this video, I was thinking, geez, you know, like if you had 10 people and, and everybody wanted to play, you could get a guy on each side uh, just managing your oil. Because it's not just about, you know, where their derricks are on the board and how much oil you've got. There's also, you get to buy and sell oil. There's lend leasing oil, you know, <laughs> and... And, and th then, of course, you need to use the oil. You need to allocate the, that resource. And so it's, it's really quite complex, and it's going to take you longer to play a game for sure if you're going to play it with this one. But for those people out there that, that like the complexity, this is going to make it complex. And really why we like the complexity is because we're trying to recreate World War II. We're trying to recreate it as close as possible. Um, and and really what we've done up to this point like in, in Axis and Allies and, and now with this game that, that is getting into it in more in-depth uh, Global War um, really what we've been doing is putting plastic pieces down on the board and rolling dice and just you know this tank kills that tank and you know it, it's not that difficult right it's uh, it's it's more like a game of chess but uh, World War II was much more complex than that. There was more to do with it than just moving your pieces around on a board. Um, uh, and there was more to do with it than who's got the biggest guns. Like uh, this, t this dives you into that. Probably the most important resource um, in the war, uh, besides the weaponry, was the oil. Because World War II was the, the war where things kind of changed. Like even before that World War One, it was still largely fought by soldiers in trenches. You know, either like think of soldiers on the field of battle like they used to do hundreds of years ago, right? They'd all line up and they'd shoot each other or bow and arrows or whatever, you know, go hack each other up with swords. But this is the first war where there was actually a lot of machines used. You know, like we're talking tanks and we're talking planes and boats and things like that. Things that needed oil, right? And so... Um, if you could limit your opponent, uh, your enemy's uh, ability to get oil, then you starve their machines, then their machines are useless. And if you have machines and they don't have machines, well then you're going to win the war, aren't you? And that's really what happened um, in the war. Like, uh, And I'll, I'll take you through that in a minute. But um, uh, that's th th that was a lot of what World War II was, 
was a war over oil. And you see even in today's world where everybody's clamoring over oil and you think, why, why are they fighting over the Middle East to get all that oil? You know, like it's lot, there's lots over there. We just need it for our cars. Well, that's not it. They know that in today's war machines that, that you need oil in order to power those machines of war. And if, if um, there's one country that takes all the oil, then everybody else is gonna be shit out of luck when it, when it comes to fighting a war. And so, you know, you've lost the war before it's even begun if you don't have access to oil in today's world. And that's the way it was in World War II. So let me just show you um, what I've done here. Let me take you around the board. I've set it up uh, with all of the, the, the resources that, that comes in, in, the, in the instructions. And um, let, let me just take you over to the Middle East here. And um, they don't recommend that you put in put your all of your stuff on the board in fact they don't give you enough stuff to do that I had a bit of extra stuff I had some extra oil derricks and so I was able to set up all the oil derricks on the board that you would need but like I didn't have enough of these chips here so but they don't want you to set up the neutrals because they're only okay if, if somebody takes control of a neutral then um, then you then you can set up these things on the on there right otherwise you, you know you just look at the piece of paper or the chart that says how much is on that neutral and let that inform you as to whether or not you need to go and and conquer that neutral or not right uh, but what I did uh, for the purposes of this video was I set it up so that uh, so that you would you would see where all the oil is on the board uh, when the game begins. And this is a game that's going on already. Like you can see uh, the Turkish roundels here, right, in, in the Middle East. Like in this game, Turkey at war, Turkey became a beast in this game. If you watched my past videos uh, recently, you'll know this is a game I'm playing with my friend uh, Panzer King. And he, uh, he, he's playing the Axis and they got the they got it early and so he, he was able to start attacking before everybody else was at war and and so he was able to take out the Middle East so let's just take a look around okay like you look up there you look at how much uh, how many oil derricks the Americans got now the these are this is one oil derrick the silver ones here this oil derrick here in the rules it says five but you can't build oil derricks in this game and there's no territory that has five air, oil derricks on it. So what I think they meant was three because there's several places that have three oil derricks. And so what I've done is I've, th this is going to represent three oil derricks. And then these things here, the, the black chips there, they represent oil reserves. Now the, this one here is just, a, just got the black chip for the oil reserve. That means there's no oil in there. That, that that oil, it just represents the facility where they store oil. Whereas this over here, I'm using these yellow chips for, um, for five units of oil. So there's 10 units of oil here, 10 units of oil here. They tell you to use the yellow chips for, um, for 10 units of oil, but they give you lots of yellow chips. And I've got other color chips too. If I, if I ever find that I'm using that much oil, I can use a different chip for 10 as well. So those are the things that you get in the game. And like here, here's uh, they don't give you this many gold oil derricks, but I had a bunch extra, so I'm using them. They give you 200 of these chips. Uh, what do they give you? The 30 of these or something like that. Um, they give you 26 of the silver and the gold ones, uh, five of them. Uh, they, they you, like I said, they're supposed to be five. Now these, uh, you, you see in the on the website, historical board gaming. There's two different ways you can buy this game. The deluxe set and the regular set the difference the only difference between the deluxe set and the regular set you see this chip here it's a nice acrylic chip right um you get 50 of these uh the other the other uh set the the less expensive set um those are cardboard like uh the cardboard uh roundels that you would get out of an axis and allies game that's exactly what they would be it would look exactly like this but it would be cardboard instead of the acrylic chips. I prefer the acrylic chips myself, so that's why I went with the more expensive version of the game. And they, they don't give you enough of those. Like here you'll see, this is an oil reserve with oil in it. This is also an oil reserve, but I didn't have an oil chip to put on it. The, there's almost enough to put all of the oil, but like I said, you're not supposed to put all the oil in the game. Like this one you would put in because this is an Italian one, right? But these ones over here, like I didn't need to put any of these chips over here because uh, those are all neutrals and, and nobody has taken over those neutrals. But uh, like I said, I just wanted to do this so that you would get a sense of um, 
where all the oil is in the game. So I was mentioning earlier about what, what the importance was. Let me just take you to this area up here. Now, one of the turning points, one of the big moments in the war was the Battle of Stalingrad here, when the Germans attacked Stalingrad. Like you think, why won't they just go for their capital up there in Moscow, right? But Stalingrad was more important because this is where the oil was, was down here. Germany was running out of oil. And so um, the, uh, the, the Russian oil was largely down here. Like you see, there's three oil derricks there, there's three oil derricks there, and there's lots of oil reserves down here, right? That's where they were going to, but this is where the Russian army was. They couldn't just skirt around them because then they'd be trapped by the Russian army, cut off from their supplies. So they needed to take out the Russian army in Stalingrad in order to get into the oil, and then even beyond there. I mean, then they're in the, the, into the Middle East, and they had they had enough oil for the rest of the war. You know, they were going to be fine with oil, but they needed to get that. Like you've heard of the Battle of the Bulge before. Basically, what the Battle of the Bulge was was a desperation move by the Germans because they were running out of oil. They said. <laughs> And bullets and everything they said you know what just just attack just go ahead and attack we're gonna attack in one spot there uh, which made that bulge right so they 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 just went and they were trying to they were trying to get through the allied lines to get through to their supplies so that they could steal their oil and whatever else they could get their hands on it was a desperation move by the Germans right um, and so you can you kind of get the, the importance of oil on this side uh, the Axis lost one of the reasons they lost was because they ran out of oil or, or running out of oil like they had planes but they, they they couldn't send them up because they had no oil right they, they couldn't fly them and over on this side of the board really the reason that the, the Japanese went to war with the Americans was because of oil like you look at here Japan Japan here's an oil reserve right but you know like they were just storing oil they had no derricks on there, there's no oil uh, natural to the island of Japan uh, you can't drill for oil there. There just was none there. And so, and, and then that, that holds true for um, all the resources. It's not just oil. Like Jap Jap Japanese expansion was more about going and getting resources um, to make themselves a wealthy nation, for, for lack of a better term. You know what I mean? They wanted more. Uh, it wasn't just about more land. It was more land to get resources. They needed oil because uh, they were like us, uh, they were coming into a modern world that, that was powered by oil. And so they needed to go out and get it, right? Um, now, there's lots of oil down here. You look at all this oil down here uh, in the Dutch Islands. Like, uh, there's uh, uh, three derricks there. There's one derrick there. There's three derricks there, you know. And there was uh, oil reserves down here. Uh, there's oil, There was oil down here. But the Americans wouldn't let them have it. Uh, they, 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 they had an embargo, right? Like they had, the Americans were in the Philippine Islands here. They had a naval presence down here and they, they put their ships up and they said, no, you can't get by here. We know you're at war with China, but, uh, we're not going to get involved, but you, you can't have this oil. Basically, that's what they did. Um, there's more to it than that, but you know, like that's the basic, uh, thing of it was that. So the Japanese, uh, like the, the, they needed oil. They, they couldn't get by without it. They couldn't keep um their their war machine going without more oil um and so what what were they going to do they knew that at some point they were going to have to take on the united states or just go home you know what i mean but let's just give up war let's just go home and, and let's just be fishermen right it was, it was it was the choice they had to make they were getting oil from the united states and, and in this game they're going to you'll see when we go through the rules they're going to get um they're going to get uh three oil chips every turn um, kind of like the money that they get every turn, uh, they, they get $3 in this game every turn. And then if they attack China once the, in one turn, then they only get $2. Attack China again, they only get one. It's the same thing with the oil. They're going to do exactly that same rule with the oil as well. They're going to get three from the United States. And then two if they attack China, if they have a combat move into China once. Uh, one if they have a combat move into China the next turn. And then no more oil from the Americans if they keep up their war in China. Because the Americans were just, no, you know, like if you're going to attack uh, China, then we're not going to give you any oil, basically, was what it was, right? And there was a bit of oil in China, but not a lot, right? Um, like the, the oil that you see, you wonder why, you know, like there's none, no oil in Canada, like Alberta up there, there's no oil. But that's because there was no oil back then, or at least they didn't drill for it back then. So you got to remember, this is the 1930s, right? This is the 1936 setup. And so not everywhere in the world was tapped. Like here, there's no oil derricks in Saudi Arabia there, right? 
they just they hadn't done that yet there so um anyway what did the japanese do well we all know what they did and we all know how it turned out for them but you know they they like i said they only had two choices go home and be fishermen <laughs> or man up and go, go, go get that oil eh? so they figured um well if we're gonna do this if we're gonna if we're gonna violate this and we're gonna bring the americans into the war we might we better kick them in the nuts as hard as we can and then run and then go go get that oil and and, and go take over the pacific rim and as much of asia as we can before the americans can get there right uh now if the americans had had carriers here at pearl harbor then that would have helped them out greatly. But all that was there at the time was the battleships. Um, I don't know how it would have turned out anyway if the Americans had some carriers there because uh, carriers would have probably provided better defense if they could have got the planes up off them. But if the, uh, if the, the Zeros had taken out the, the carriers first, then, uh, then that would have been a huge blow to the Americans. And there was a battle here at Midway Island, carrier battle between uh, the Japanese and the Americans. It was also a pivotal point in the war here in the Pacific. Um, I encourage you to, to check that out. There's a good movie about that uh, that kind of shows you that the Americans got lucky. The Japanese carriers were, were empty and they found them, you know, and, and, and they bombed them. And, and that was the beginning of the end for the Japanese. It could have went the other way. It could have been that the, the Japanese came upon the American carriers, just happened to have torpedoes on <laughs> and they sunk the American carriers. That would have made, I think the war would have still, uh, the Americans still would have beat them over here, but they might not have, like they might, um, it would have taken longer. And so the, the Americans might have ended up suing for peace and Japan could have got, they could have, might, might have been able to kept the stuff that they had already in China and maybe down in the islands, uh, the South Pacific islands. You never know, right? So that was a pivotal battle there. And they, but anyway, that's what happened is they had to they had to start a war with the Americans to go get oil. And that's why it's so important in this game. Um, and if you wanted to make your game, uh, your uh, um, your war game real, was to put in the resources. And you don't need to put them all in, although you can. But th this one resource, oil, was really what it was all about. And uh, a lot of the wars that will be fought from now on, even uh, from then on and from now on, it's not just over ideology, it, it's, it's going to be over energy, right? So whether it's oil or whether there's a different um, energy source, source in the future, uh, that could be what we fight over. Um, and that'll be a big part of it anyway, a really big part of it. So I'm going to go through the rules, but let me just set up for that and I'll be right back. Okay, so um, it, up here in the blue, it just uh, lists what, what uh, you get with your set, and I already went over that. You get the oil wells, uh, like the Derricks, there's 26 silver and 5 gold. Um, 50 of the oil chips, uh, 200 black chips, and 30 yellow chips, so that's what you get. Okay, so let's start with the, with the, uh, the rules here. Okay, so oil reserves. Let, let me just show you, this is uh, from someplace in India here because it was nice and close. So this is your oil reserve right here, the, this chip, okay? And uh, it, it re represents a facility that you would store oil in. Um, it's not an underground reserve. So think of it as a big, uh, a big warehouse. Uh, and then underneath is the, the, the oil reserves that are in there. So this is two units of oil. Like when it says the un it costs you one unit to move your aircraft, then that you would have to spend one of these. You know what I mean? But in, in that one spot, there's two of them. Um, and so this isn't one. You know how you put a dude on top of a chip and that's two chip, that's two dudes? Well, not here. This isn't three oils. This is two oils because there's two oils and then there's the facility. Okay, so you still need two black chips under there. You wouldn't put one black chip under, under that to represent two oils. Okay, so oil reserves. Many land zones have oil reserves. Uh, these represent stores of crude oil and petroleum storage facilities not in ground reserves. These are set up at the start of the scenario. Uh, and there's a different setup, like I've set it up for the 36, there's a different setup for the 39. It's not that much different because, you know, it's not like they doubled their oil production in three years, right? But it, it is slightly different. Um, oil, rep, oil reserves are represented on the board by the black chips, like I said. Um, yellow chips can represent 10. I'm, I'm using it as five, but you can use it as 10 if you want. Uh, and I, you never know, I might go to, um, I haven't played with these, so I might uh, come to realize that I don't need them. 
uh, fives. But if, if I do, then uh, I've got more colors of chips that I can use. So capture. Oil reserves are captured if the land zone they are in are captured. Whoever possesses the land zone possesses the oil reserves. So like here, um, the, the, the Italians have taken over Cairo. So now these oil reserves, and if there was a, a derrick there, which there isn't, but uh, those oil reserves now belong to the Italians uh, because they captured it. So destructions. Oil reserves can be strategically bombed. Every five points of damage eliminates one oil. Uh, oil reserves are defended by inherent anti-aircraft guns as if they were a factory. So you could do a strategic bombing raid on, this, on, on these oil reserves here. Um, and if you did, you would need to um, bomb it for uh, five points and that takes off one of these. If you bomb it for four, then you didn't take off one, okay? Um, uh, if you bombed it for eight, then you would take off one, right? If you bombed it for ten, then you get to take off two. And then this oil reserve would be empty like that. And there are some on the board where there's an oil reserve there, but, uh, but there's nothing in it, like this one here. There's an oil reserve with nothing in it. And there's chips here where I, I, I didn't have enough of these to put on there. I think I was nine short of what uh, was in the thing. But like I said, you don't need to have as many as, uh, like you don't need to put all the oil on the board. You just need to put the oil on the board that you're using. You're not using any of that oil over there, so you don't really need to mark it, right? So moving, it says move uh, oil can be moved uh, 4.1 to 4.3. Let's just skip ahead to, to those, 4.1 to 4.3. Um, so you can lend lease it, you can sell it. Um, uh, a, a nation may lend lease oil anytime uh, they could lend lease money. So you have to be available. And, and um, if uh, I'm not gonna go through the lend lease rules here. Uh, this is going to be a long enough video as it is. So uh, I have made a video on, on lend lease in, uh, in the past. You can just go to that video if you'd like. Uh, and, and that will tell you all about lend leasing and interdiction and all that kind of stuff, right? So uh, they could lend lease oil anytime they could lend lease money. Lending oil counts as lending money and is subject to the collective limit thereof. Uh, in other words, you, you uh, cannot lend more combined oil and money than half of the receiving nation's income. Oil is subject to interdiction as if it were IPPs. Unlike regular lend lease, a player may lend lease oil to itself by moving oil from reserves to reserves in its home country. Lend lease oil is subject to interception by nations at war with the receiver. So um, that's how you would move oil uh, using the lend lease. And also if you noticed in there, um, you could, uh, like if you were able to lend lease uh, 10 to, like from the Americans to Anzac, let's say, if America had at least 20 in their production, so that means they can lend lease up to 10 IPP worth, you could lend lease five oil and five dollars if you wanted down to Anzac, if they were both at war and you, like they both qualified to do the lend lease thing, right? Um, and, and and so uh, yeah, like it, you could you could do it that way, but it it basically works the same as money does in lend lease. So you could also sell oil. A player may sell oil to other players. A player who cannot lend lease oil due to lend lease restrictions restrictions can s still sell oil to other players for one IPP per oil token. The oil is purchased by the receiving na nation during the lender's production phase and set aside as if it were lend lease. It is delivered in the placed units phase as if it were lend lease. So you you uh, you can sell. Now where's that next page here? Uh, here, let me just set the camera down for a second. I screwed my pages up here. Okay, so then receiving oil over here. A nation that receives oil from another nation, lent or purchased, must receive that oil via supply path. Again, supply path is in uh, in the rules. I'm not going to go through it all. So that's railway, overseas, or a combination thereof. Uh, that goes from one or more um, sending players' reserves to one or more of the, the receiving players' reserves. Like, you can't just send oil to somebody that doesn't have uh, an oil reserve, like one of these chips here. Uh, so you have to have you have to have a storage facility, right? 
Um, and everybody does to begin the game, but you, you just got to make sure that you do right because they can also be uh, conquered. Um, and you can buy them. Uh, I'll show you that later. Um, Lend lease or solar oil can be intercepted as if it were money. When oil and money are subject to an interception rule, you must suffer losses in each equally. So if a submarine destroys four IPPs, you know, as you're taking oil and money across the ocean, then you have to uh, distribute it equally. So you would lose two IPP in money and you'd lose two oil tokens. You can't just decide, okay, I'm gonna lose all four in money and, and then not, in, uh, not lose any oil. Um, so that, that, uh, that goes for moving oil. So then we go to even distribution. A player receiving oil into reserves from trade or nation specific agreements must distribute those oil tokens as evenly as possible among all reserves in their home country. And again, you need to know the rules on that because uh, your home country, like let's just go this real quick in, in Germany up here. Um, Germany's home country is what's here in gray. That's German, that's all of Germany's home country. So that doesn't include this reserve over here, for instance, in Austria. And currently, the Germans only have one reserve in their home country, and that's the one in Berlin. But you, you can build these, right? So you could have a reserve here, you could have a reserve here. But if you had three reserves like that, and you were to get lend lease three oils, then you have to go one, one, and one. You couldn't just put all three of them here. So you have to distribute them evenly. Um, and then new reserve areas, that's what I was just talking about. A player may build a new reserve area by paying 7 IPP and placing an oil anywhere in a supply path. And of course you know the rules on supply paths. Um, they are, they are, um, you can trace it back to a major factory in your home country. That's what a supply path is. And that we're talking about tracing it through uh, naval or zones, uh, going through naval bases if you're doing it with water, and of course uh, with railroads. And there's lots of rules on that. I'm not going through them all. Okay, oil derricks. So here, this is an oil derrick. Uh, this is a silver one, so that means it's a single oil derrick. Uh, I, think, I think I got that from Qatar. Okay. Each oil derrick on the board represents an oil well and produces one oil per turn in the place units and collect the income phase of the turn. Gold oil derricks can be used to represent five derricks. Derricks cannot be built or destroyed, so they're there for the game. Uh, no more is going to get put into the game. What you see on the board is all the derricks that are going to be in the game. Uh, no more, no less. Now, like I said here, it says five, but there's no place in, on the board where there's five oil derricks. And so that's why I think what they meant was three. And I did send an email to um, to Will, ask him a few questions about these rules, but he hasn't gotten back to me. And I, I have to make this video because I'm going away in, in less than two days now. So, uh, and I wanted to get this video done before I left because uh, I, in, just in case we're gonna play these rules when I'm on the road um, at Ryan Carcass's house. So I'll, I'll put this video out so he can see it and he can decide whether or not he wants to play these with these rules. But I do believe what they meant was three because three is the maximum that you'll find in, in any nation or any territory. And um, there's lots of places with three. So I think that's what they meant is three and not five. Produced oil. All oil produced by an oil derrick is placed in the same zones as the producing well. Capture. Oil derricks wells may be captured by the opposing player. And that would be the same as capturing the reserves. You just go and you take that territory. Uh, so like if you took Iran here, and, and this is what these guys have done. They've taken Iran. So this oil and these derricks belong to the Turks because they captured it. And then, like, you wouldn't have put them on the board for Iran because they were a neutral until somebody captured it. Then you put them on the board, so you see them. That's what you would happen. Neutral wells here, this is what I was just saying. There is no need to keep track of production and accumulation of reserves in neutral wells, even for trade agreements. Neutral wells do not produce oil that adds to accumulative reserves, though it's sometimes distributed to major powers. Neutral wells only produce once that neutral is controlled or aligned by a major power. So, like... Um, uh, let's take uh, let's take this one in Iraq here. There's two oil wells in Iraq, and there's a certain amount in reserve here, 
right? I think there's four, four, uh, four chips in reserve. So every turn, you don't add two chips to that until somebody takes it over, until it is controlled or aligned. If a rack is just sitting there and nobody went and got it, then you don't even need that on the board. Uh, you don't even need the derricks on the board if you don't want. Um, uh, it just it wouldn't accumulate oil. It's not until you take over that nation that it starts accumulating oil in its oil reserves from these oil derricks, right? And then from there, of course, you're going to need a supply path to get it to where you need the oil, like to, to get it to your home country, right? All right, so peacetime production. A nation that is not at war with a major power only reduced half or sorry, only receives half, uh, and you round up the, the fractions. So like a five would be um, halfway to eight. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, sorry, a five would be halfway to 10. Um, a six would be halfway to 10. Sorry, my math is, <laughs> my brain is working uh, overtime here. But you know what I mean? Um, a nation, like you only, sorry, a nation only gets half of the oil. So, uh, like the, the Ameri um you'll see once we get down, like there's tables here. It tells you how much oil you get. Uh, you only get half that if you're not at war. Uh, you'll see later. Uh, there's no need to get right into that right now. So, that is done with page four. Okay. Page five, oil use. Now this is why you need the oil. Um, and this, this part is not complicated. Like uh, you need to know it. Uh, once you know it though, it's, it's really not that difficult. Uh, the difficulty is in all the other stuff, like the totality of all the things that you do. But this part here is pretty straightforward. So nations use oil each turn based on what units they move. Uh, players expend oil each turn in a variety of ways as outlined in this table down here. So uh, when a player takes an action that uses oil, he immediately pays the cost and then removes oil from one or more of his reserves on the board. The reserves must be in a supply path to a major factory in the moving nation's home country. Um, a player can only expend the oil that he has at the start of his turn and cannot pay with the oil he captured or produced this turn. So kind of like a factory. You couldn't just go and, and take over a rack with its oil reserves and then pay for something, right? Uh, you have to have that oil at the start of your turn in order to use it, okay? Um, and uh, I guess I was a little bit wrong there what I said a minute ago. So as long as this, um, this oil um, reserve here is in a supply path, uh, so it's connected to, like, let's say the Italians, right? Uh, the Italians own this, um, own this canal. So you could trace the supply path uh, along through here and then up and then through the uh, bases here and to a major factory in your home country. And there it is right there. So if that was the Italians oil, and I think that's probably what it is anyway, because the Italians are, are controlling the Turks. So you would just take off a chip here. The, the Italians wanted to do something, they could take off one of these chips. Okay, so what you would use it for, land operations. So to move any number of your land units into any number of land zones. And there is something later, which uh, you'll see in a minute, uh, that says if you don't have any in a while, you can still move infantry or cavalry, right? So I don't think that this includes infantry or cavalry. Because, I mean, why would you need oil to move those, right? Uh, there is something down at the bottom here. It says, while at war with one or more major powers, each turn to support domestic and military activities, if at war with a major power, that also costs you one black chip. So I would think that that would suffice with your infantry and your cavalry. So anything that is a land unit that's not infantry and cavalry and I will let you know later if he gets back to me. That was one of the questions that I had because it does say later that if you had no oil, you could still move your infantry and your cavalry. So I assume that this means other than your infantry and cavalry. So your tanks, your motorized, your mechanized, you know, um, 
your artillery, it, it would cost oil. So it, you don't need one per thing. Like if you're moving 10 tanks, you don't need to, it, it doesn't cost you 10 oil. You could move one tank that costs you one oil, or you could use, you could move 12 tanks, four mechs, six motorized infantry and, and five artillery. That would still only cost you one oil, okay? And so this is what I'm talking about, managing things, right? Like say you're getting low on oil. Well, you, maybe you don't move any of that stuff this turn. Maybe you wait till next turn and you spend one and you move more of it, right? <laughs> if that makes any sense to you. It, it will make sense once you start playing the game. So then air operations. To move any number of your aircraft except for your strategic bombers in any number of zones. So again, uh, to move one fighter, it costs one oil. To move one fighter, six uh, medium bombers, four tactical bombers, um, you know, that still costs one oil. So any number of aircraft, one oil. And then uh, naval operations, to move any a number of ships or submarines, uh, except capital ships. So capital ships are separate from ships and strategic bombers are separate from aircraft as far as oil is concerned. Uh, so then, if you wanted, if you did want to move your strategic bombers, that costs you one oil. So any number of strategic bombers, whether it's one or whether it's ten strategic bombers, that costs you one oil. And the same with capital ships. To move one capital ship or a hundred capital ships, it costs one oil. So that is separate from your regular naval operations. If you wanted to move um, all of this navy down here, it would cost you two oil because you have capital ships in there and you also have regular ships. So to move all of that Japanese ships there, you, it would cost you two oil. Um, and then, like I said uh, a minute ago, uh, while you're at war with one or more major powers, it's going to cost you one oil. It's just gonna cost you one oil to be at war. And uh, I assume if you don't have any oil, then it's not gonna cost you anything <laughs> because you don't have anything. But uh, if that's the case, then you can't move anything, right? So here, like out of oil. If a player does not have enough oil to pay for the cost, he cannot move any units except infantry class units and cavalry. When a reserve location runs out of oil, that oil, uh, that marker stays there to show that there are storage, uh, petroleum storage facilities there. So even if there's no black markers underneath this thing here, uh, that marker would still stay there because you might put oil in there later, right? So this is why I think that uh, you could still move infantry class uh, your infantry and your cavalry around uh, on a turn without having to expend an oil because it, it doesn't cost you can still move them when you don't have any oil so why wouldn't you right okay so there's some things that don't cost oil that um, you think well no I, you, you're gonna need oil to, well no you don't actually there's a few of them here Let, let's talk about that so anytime it is not their turn okay so when somebody attacks you and um, uh, so you're retreating, you're submerging, you're scrambling your aircraft, you're defending. That doesn't cost you any oil. You know, like you just, somebody, somebody decides to attack uh, uh, England up there. Uh, and they bring their ships in and you decide to scramble your fighters. That doesn't cost you oil because you're the defender in this case. Um, so you wouldn't have to expend oil to, to move that. So you can't go and make somebody use their last drop of oil. <laughs> just to, uh, just to be, you know, make them scramble just to lose their last drop of oil. Put it that way. It doesn't cost you anything to defend. Um, well, moving units that are being lend leased. So let's say the Americans here lend lease a tank down to Anzac. That doesn't cost any oil. Okay. Uh, while being transported in non-combat movement on a land or air transport. Transport. So. I don't know what a land transport meant. Maybe they meant naval transport, you know, like this one here. This naval transport, maybe that's what they meant. Because I don't, I can't remember any land transports in this game, right? Um, but anyway, uh, moving in non-combat. So if you wanted to, where, where do I have one of those? Okay, up here. There's a there's a, an air transport. If I wanted to, to move a dude uh, anywhere, really, in non-combat movement, that's not going to cost me an oil. Um, and then uh, if units do not move when attacking. So example, the Soviet Japanese border skirmish or staying on combat air patrol. If you're on combat air patrol already, then it doesn't cost you any money 
to uh, to stay on combat air patrol. But here, let's just take a look up here for a second. Now, if you're uh, playing this game before, or you've watched my videos, you know that there's something called border skirmish. So, but without being at war, and without declaring war, anybody along this border can shoot each other without moving. Like these guys don't move into here. They would stay here and I say, okay, these guys are gonna border skirmish with these guys. So these guys all get a shot and this guy gets a shot and then nothing happens or whatever, you know, like that one, one guy dies or whatever, I don't know, you know, whatever happens with the dice, right? But even if, uh, even if this guy gets killed and these guys don't move in, that was just, uh, they were just shooting across the border. So that's not going to cost you any oil, um, an attack that, do that doesn't make you move anywhere. Um, okay, what else? When using strategic rail movement. So you've got your railways on the board here. Um, when you use those railways, that doesn't cost you any oil, okay? Uh, you're not going to use them on attack moves, you're going to use them on non-combat moves. Um, so like I was saying, it, um, that uh, it wouldn't cost you anything to move your infantry or your cavalry. Well, if you were moving a tank on a rail world on non-combat movement, well, that wouldn't cost you any um, that wouldn't cost you any oil either. So, and the last thing is controlled miners do not use oil except for the CCP and KMT. They may lend lease oil. Um, so, I guess this would be a no, this is an aligned miner. These guys are aligned to the Italians. But if they were controlled by the Italians, then they could lend lease oil to the Italians. But they're aligned. But uh, there's there's a, a difference between controlled and aligned. Again, I encourage you to go back and either uh, look through the rules or uh, watch my videos and, and you can find out what the difference between controlled and aligned is and, and define controlled and aligned. I'm not going to go through the all the rules of the game every time I do a video on something that uh, like this. So, uh, next page. Okay, we've already done receiving well, haven't we? Yeah, so we, we've already gone through what lend leasing oil is, selling oil and receiving oil. I thought I wasn't skipping there. Okay, good. Now, uh, setup. At the start of the game, place a number of black po poker chips in each land zone to represent oil uh, reserves and a number of oil derricks in each zone to re represent oil wells as shown on the tables below. And that's these tables here. So uh, these ones here, like uh, you'd have to look at the neutral table. But this is, uh, these are German. So like you see here, there's, uh, there's three reserves in Berlin and one oil well. So you look up there. In Berlin, we have three chips under here, and we have one silver one to represent one oil well. Oil wells and oil derricks are the same thing. It's called a derrick or a well. Um, and then you've got some Italian ones, and you've got some Japanese ones, and here's all of the the uh, allied ones. Um, uh, this down here, Len Lee Stockpile 9, we'll get into that. Uh, there, there are special rules that, that are unique to each country. And, so, and again, that's why it, uh, it adds to the complexity. And here's your, uh, your common turn. There's one, uh, one reserve in, I guess I should have put a chip under that. One reserve in Communist China. And, uh, and the rest are, are in... Let me see here. Here we go. I'd put a, a storage facility in Communist China, but I didn't put a chip over there. So here, you see there's one in, in China here. And then the ones that show the common turn, I've put those all on there too, as, as, as well as the oil wells. And here's the neutrals. And you see, it's an extensive list, right? There's tons of, 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 of reserves and neutrals. So you don't put all these on the board until you need them until somebody attacks that or, or uh, aligns or controls that nation. You don't need to put any of these on here. And you can see that there's 36 reserves, 36 wells. Then there's 1939 reserves and 1939 wells. And some of them are slightly different. Uh, like here, there's four reserves and 39 and only one, and that's Argentina, right? 
So there are some differences, but not always, right? Some of them are the same. Uh, Albania is the same in both scenarios. Some of them are the same, some of them are different. <clears throat> so, those are the tables. And now, the nation specific rules. Now, each nation has specific rules regarding this, this scheme, um, this set of rules, uh, if you're playing with oil wars. So Vichy France and Vichy colonies give all of their oil to Germany. Germany may use this oil as if it were their own. Okay, so uh, where's an example of that? Right here. You see this is Vichy here, and there's uh, some reserves there. There's no well, well there, but there's a reserve there. This one came out as free French. But if, if this had come out as Vichy, then this would have been, the, then you would send that to, to Germany as well. Um, and here, this is, this would be, well, I guess Germany took over this territory. But Vichy gives all of their oil to Germany. Um, and Germany receives three oil per turn from a neutral Romania. So when you look over here right now, there's Romania there and it's got three derricks on it and it's got three chips on it. I did, again, I didn't have an oil, um, an oil chip to put on top of that. But um, if Romania is neutral, which it's not right now, but before it, it becomes somebody else's, uh, whether that's Russia or whether it's uh, Germany, before it becomes that, that, they will give three oil chips every turn to Germany until uh, until something happens, until somebody takes it out, right? And uh, what else? Germany receives one oil per turn from a neutral Venezuela. So Germany is automatically going to get one from Venezuela, if it's neutral. If the Americans have Venezuela, then they're not going to get it, right? If Germany and US, uh, USSR sign the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, the USSR must give Germany three oil per turn and Germany must pay three IPP to the Russian for that oil. So that, that's uh, something that's gonna alter that Molotov-Ribbentrop pact if you decide to sign that between the Germans and the Russians. Uh, Russia uh, is uh, obligated to sell Germany three oils every turn. Um, and then synthetic oil. Each German major factory in German home country produces one additional oil per turn beginning in July of 1938. So there are four major factories uh, at this point in Germany. Um, I guess that would be a, a reason for you to buy another major factory in Germany, wouldn't it? Uh, in the German home country is uh, to pr produce more oil. Um, but as, as it is right now, beginning in 1938, those factories themselves are gonna produce an oil each. Okay, so the Russians. What's different about the Russians? So if, uh, okay, they, they mentioned that where the, the Russians have to sell the Germans with the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact. And the other thing it says, the USSR cannot lend lease oil. So that is except for that Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact. But normally they can't sell oil or uh, lend lease oil. They can't send it to the British or, you know, to the, well, the Americans don't need it. But they, they, they couldn't send it to the British or the French, put it that way. Uh, so the British Commonwealth, so that's the Great Britain, the Far East Command, or ANZAC. Great Britain gets all oil produced from Iraq and Iran each turn. They do not have access to their stockpiles. So, um, I would assume that that is only if they're neutral, because here they're not neutral. But if Iran here and Iraq were, were uh, neutral, then you see there's four oil wells there. There's two in Iran and two in Iraq. That oil goes to the Commonwealth every turn um, until somebody takes one of them out, right? Um, but they don't get their stockpiles. Uh, uh, Great Britain would have to come down here and attack Iraq, attack Iraq and take out Iraq, and then they would they would have they would get these stockpiles. Uh, the British Commonwealth is one nation for the purposes of oil production and storage. Thus, Commonwealth units share use and storage as if they were a single nation, even if controlled by multiple players. So, uh, if you were paying one IPP, for instance, to uh, move your ground units, right, um, you wouldn't be able to move 
ground units over there. You could move your ground units over here in Far East Command. You could move your ground units here in Anzac, uh, in Australia or whatever. You could move the gray guys. Uh, you don't need to pay one for Anzac and one for these guys and one for those guys up there. It's just one. Uh, one to move your planes, uh, one to move your bombers. You know what I mean? You, 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 uh, you use the oil together and, um, and you spend it together. And that, that includes if you had a lot of players playing, a lot of humans playing the game, and one guy was playing that and one guy was playing these two, it's still, it, it doesn't matter. It, it's the, the rule is still the same. It only costs one and, uh, and the oil belongs to all of you guys. Or all of those uh, nations within the Commonwealth. So, France. France receives three oil during their collect income and place units phase. This oil comes from U.S. lend lease stockpiles and represents trade agreements in place at the time. Um, a lend lease supply path must exist to the USA or the oil is lost that turn. France stops receiving oil when it surrenders. So the U.S. keeps giving France three oils until... Uh, until it surrenders. But that doesn't mean that, uh, it occurs to me, that doesn't mean when Paris falls they stop getting oil. Because you see, they've, uh, they've moved their capital down here. So they should still be getting oil, right? I would think, anyway. Um, not that they would need a lot of oil, though, because they're not going to have a lot of units left. Like, you look at the French units that are still on the board right now, and there's not many of them. Because some of the units that you see out there are Vichy, right? All the boats are Vichy. Um, France hardly has any units on the board, so they're not going to use a lot of oil, really, you know, after Paris fall. But they, they still will receive that three. Um, so, uh, Free France uses oil, but can receive that oil anywhere it has reserves. So, this one here went Vichy in this game, but if it went Free French, then it can still use the reserves there. It can use these reserves because they got that one. Um, but that's, that's pretty pretty easy to figure out anyway. Italy receives three oil during their collect income and place units phase. This oil comes from U.S. Lend-Lease stockpiles and represents trade agreements in place at the time. A Lend-Lease supply path must exist to the USA or the oil is lost that turn. Italy stops receiving oil when it is at war with any member of the Allies. So I don't think that, like, I think that uh, that's a moot point. Like, if Italy was not at war with anybody, then I don't think that you could interdict uh, any oil coming to them, right? Like, uh, Britain wouldn't stop oil from going there, I don't think. Pretty sure, anyway. But anyway, Italy gets oil from the Americans until they go to war with anybody in the Allies. You know, even whether it's the, the British or the French or whoever, once they're at war with any of the allies, then America stops sending them that three. Now the USA, you remember I showed you that table where it costs you a, 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 an oil to do this and an oil to do that and an oil to do all these other things? It doesn't cost the Americans anything because the Americans, if you look here, you look up here, look at that. This Mexican oil well, has been uh, downing tequila. So you look here, there's a couple of oil wells here. There's uh, there's three oil wells here. They don't have any in their stockpile here, but they've got 10 in here. And then you look on the other side over here, and they just got a shit ton of oil wells and oil reserves and everything. America's got so much oil that you don't even worry about it. They're just saying, you know what, America does not need to worry about oil. They don't need to spend oil every time they do something. They're going to far out, uh, out produce anything that they're going to need. Basically, what you're, what you're doing as the American is you're a vendor, right? You're either lend leasing oil or you're selling oil. That's all you're doing as far as oil wells, or sorry, oil wars goes. You're just, uh, I've got so much oil, who wants oil? <laughs> so you're selling oil, right? We're selling it or giving it away, it's up to you. So beginning in 36, the USA must give Japan up to three of its oil per turn. And I mentioned this earlier in the video. They may reduce this by one each turn that Japan makes a combat move inside of China. So that's just like that uh, where they're giving them three bucks and then you reduce it by one when they're attacking China each time. Beginning in July 36, 
USA must give three oil to France, uh, and it says one oil to Italy, but you remember up here in Italy it says three, so I assume that this is supposed to be three, or this is supposed to be one. That was one of the questions I had for Will. So uh, it's one or three. <laughs> The U.S. does not ever need to use oil. The USA only has a lending stockpile, which is 9 IP, or yeah, 9 IPP for both 36 and 39 scenario, and is replenished up to its maximum 9 IPP per turn. Per turn, the USA does not accumulate oil and then re resets to 9 each turn. This number does not reduce or increase with U.S. war status. So you're producing and giving away 9 each turn, or selling, selling or giving away. Um, if the USA captures reserves or aligns a country that, with oil stockpiles in production, those are added to the US lend lease uh, sale tolls. So if you were to, um, there's rules where you can um, align these nations down here, right? Uh, the Americans can align Brazil, for instance. And if that was the case, then you would get the production and you would get the reserves from Brazil. And again, you don't need oil, but you would just use that to lend lease or sell. So your uh, your the rest of the allies are, are are going to be good for oil for the game because the Americans can just keep giving them to them, you know, um, probably. And that's the way it was, right? Like uh, the allies weren't hurting for oil because uh, America had a lot of oil. Plus, um, they had control. The British had control of the Middle East, so they weren't hurting for oil at all. Whereas the Axis. <laughs> Yeah, they were hurting. Okay, so as far as Spain, no oil is used by Republican or Nationalist forces during the Spanish Civil War. So uh, that uh, Spanish Civil War that's going on, and that's the regular rules, okay? That's not, uh, you'll see in a minute here, if you're playing the, the, um, the Spanish Civil War set, the expansion set, then there's something else to do with that. But if you're just playing straight up the uh, without that set, then you don't use oil there. Uh, you don't need it. They're saying that they're giving you a pass on that one. Okay, we're almost done here. So these are your expansion compatibility things. So if you're playing with other sets, in other words. So Netherlands at War, if you own Netherlands at War, uh, they do have oil in Netherlands at War. Like, uh, I haven't done that one yet. I don't know if I'll get to it in the next two days. I I've got a bunch of things i got to do before I leave town. But you'll see, uh, like, it comes with oil derricks and it has oil and stuff. You would replace those rules in the Netherlands at War with these rules. You go by these rules and not those rules, okay? Uh, Spanish Civil War. So this is what I mentioned a second ago. All foreign forces inside Spain use oil regardless of their status as Spanish forces. So if you lend lease, or sorry, if you're like you send an Italian to go over and fight for the na the nationalists, then that's going to cost you oil if those guys move, right? Like if you sent a tank there, and that's the only tank you move that turn, you don't move any tanks anywhere else. Well, you still have to pay an oil because you moved a tank. Um, so. That's uh, that's that. So fighting railways, uh, armor trains and railway guns do not use oil. So basically, you, all the railways on the board are not subject to oil, okay? Uh, Atlantis, Atlantis units, uh, special weapons do not use oil. Like there's, uh, there's these uh, special weapons in there. They're kind of like magic. I don't know, not my thing, but <laughs> uh, they don't use oil. Uh, Turkey at war. Turkey does not use oil if controlled by a player. So, uh, um, I I did have a question about that as well. Like the question that I had was like, there's uh, there's an oil reserve in here in Ankara. That's got that's got two in its reserve. So in this game, for instance, the Italians have it. So if the Italians align that, uh, do they get to use Turkey's oil? Because Turkey doesn't use oil in the game. It's in. Oh, it says it does use oil if controlled by a player. So, but I would assume, like, if you're paying, uh, if you're paying an IPP to move ground forces as the Italian player, if the Italians take control of it, um, then I would assume that uh, you pay one to move your ground forces, you could move your, your uh, uh, Italian and your, um, and your Turkish ground forces. You would use them together, right? 
so you wouldn't uh, pay one for the Italians and one for the, the Turks. Okay, I get that now. As I, as I talked it out, I got it myself. <laughs> so there's only one more page in this, and it's, it's kind of a summary table. So this is a quick table, like if you were to print one off uh, uh, and put it on a card or something that you're walking around with uh, for, during the game, this would be the one because it's it summarizes it for you. It doesn't tell you where all the wells are like the other ones that I, the other table that I showed you. It just it says this is the total. Like here, uh, the British Commonwealth, when they're at peace, they're going to get four uh, four black chips, right? Um, when they're at war, they're going to get seven. And uh, that's going to change, of course, if somebody takes out uh, something, right? Like if you lose Liverpool uh, or, sorry, uh, if you lose uh, someplace that... Where your uh, where your derricks are, then you're you're going to lose that oil, right? Um, it'll go down from there. I mean, uh, France received three from U.S. stockpiles and lend lease uh, uh, U.S. So nine, like I said, you get nine to to give away or sell every turn. Nationalist China is zero; uh, they don't produce any. And this is thirty six. In thirty nine, they actually get one. Uh, Germany is three at peace, five at war. Uh, Italy, three from U.S. stockpiles. So I think the number is three, it's not one, because two places in here it says three, one place it says one, I say we go with the three. Japan is three from U.S. stockpiles. Again, you reduce that by one each time they do a combat move inside of China. The USSR is four at peace, seven at war, and the CCP is zero. And of course, there's the Molotov Ribbon Trop Pack and the other things that we talked about already that are, are going to um, that are going to change that, right? So again, let's take a, 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 a I'll take a long, slow uh, trip around the board and and uh, talk a little bit while I'm doing it. So you can see, like I said, the Americans got tons of oil, and um, it's going to change the game in that. Okay, now you need oil, so you know maybe. Maybe the Axis decide they're going to go after South America, right? Because uh, they're running out of oil. Look at all that oil down there. There's uh, there's three, four, five. There's six oil derricks down there. Plus, there's a lot of reserves, right? So who knows? That could bring that into the game. It's certainly going to bring the Middle East into this game, you know, um, because of all the oil that's in there. There's a bit down here in Africa. Not much, but there's a bit. And there's a little bit here in, in uh, Spain. But uh, that's going to be a neutral country, right? Unless uh, there's uh, there's a way that uh, Spain could get into this war, but it, I, it's probably not very many games that, that Spain's going to actually participate in in the regular war. It's probably more likely it's going to be a neutral, so that might not come into it. There's only one spot there in in France that's got oil. There's a whole bunch of oil up there in Liverpool, a reserve. But of course, there's no oil there because they, they didn't drill for oil in, in Great Britain. Uh, none in Canada up there, uh, or in the West. You see there was a reserve up there in, in Finland. There's quite a few reserves in, in Russia there, and there's enough oil derricks. Like they're not hurting for oil in Russia. And there's quite a bit of reserves and stuff. There's, Germany's going to get a lot of oil to begin with, right? But when they start losing some of their nations, or some of their uh, miners they, that they align or control, they're they're uh, they're they're gonna need to go get some oil somewhere. So if you can take them down near the end of the game, or or they're just inside of their home country, then uh, then you're going to be starving them for oil, right? And uh, you move through here, like here. There's an oil well in Burma, and there's uh, an oil storage facility, but there's no oil in it. Afghanistan, there's some, there's some oil stores there, but uh, no oil well. So once you take that reserve, uh, it doesn't replenish itself, right? There's, uh, there's only one oil well in China, and it's way over there. It's got a few reserves. In uh, 1944, I believe, uh, two there's going to be two oil wells that pop up in Mongolia here. That's the only time that something's going to pop up later in the game. There'll be two oil wells there. And Japan, of course, they're hurting for oil, right? They need to they need to expand, and that's what it was all about for them anyway. This is an oil-rich region down here, is, is, uh, is the islands down here, the South Pacific Islands. The Dutch Islands. 
There's no oil wells in Australia, but they do have some reserve there. And again, tons of oil in the western states up here. There's five oil derricks and, and lots of oil. Uh, I guess ten, because I'm using these as five chips again, right? Mexico, there's a bit. There's a, a couple of reserves here, and there's a couple of derricks, but, you know, America doesn't need the oil, so <laughs> they don't need to go get it. And anybody that comes here, well, the Americans will probably take a bit of offense to that. <laughs> And that's not just sitting there, like, that's the same territory in this game. you think it'd be separate from this territory over here, but it's not. This, uh, this part here is the same territory as what, where those oil wells are. I decided to put them on the other side because this is already crowded over here. But that's the same territory. Mexico is all one territory. So you'd have to take, you'd have to take those guys out to, take, to get those derricks and, and to get the oil. Uh, you're really going to have to hurt the Americans, I think, if you're going to go after South America. I don't think you're just going to be able to go down there and, and uh, have a free-for-all. Anyway, that's about it. So this is a pretty complex set, as you see. Um, it's going to take some some getting used to, and it's going to change the game. Like, you're used to playing this game. If you're, if you're getting uh, a little tired of it or something, you want to change things up, this would be a great set to do that. <laughs> Plus you play the game lots. Uh, me, I haven't, right? Like I've only played the game a few times so far. Um, I'm hoping to play a lot more this winter, but um, it's going to take a, a while still for me to hammer it all the rules in, into my head, even just the regular rules, right? So I, I still have to look at the rule book quite a bit, like, what, what, what was that thing again when I do this? You know? So once, uh, but if you play the game a lot and, and the rules are hammered into you, you know all about railways and supply pass and all that stuff and it's all ingrained then then and you're ready for something else then this is where where you go to is something like this because this is going to change the game this will make a game like you haven't seen before you know what i mean you, 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 in a lot of games um you might say okay let's keep the americans out of as long as possible right and that's what i've been doing is keeping them out of the game as long as possible it's doing everything you can not to get the america into the war well here you're gonna need to get them in Otherwise, you're going to run out of oil, right? You can't, you can't just, uh, you can't just go and get that one oil well and over there and, and think that that's going to be enough. You know, like you're going to have to bring America into the war to get the oil if you're the Japanese. So that's going to make things different, you know. And it's it, for the Germans, it's going to be about getting more oil as well. Like there's not a lot of oil derricks up there in in Europe. There's a lot of reserves right now. But that's going to run out eventually. Like Germany moves a lot of units a turn, right? So um, they're going to be using just about the maximum amount every time when they move. Maybe, uh, may, well, they might not move capital ships and, you know, like they might not move strategic bombers, but they're still going to be using a bunch of oil every turn. So they, they might need to go and get uh, somewhere where there's oil wells producing oil for them. Because uh, they can't just rely on those four coming from those major factories there. Anyway, I think I've given you a pretty good look here. Told you all I can. This is quite a long video, but uh, I think it was going to be, right? And if I was to do a short video, then I don't think that we were going to cover it all. So, that's oil wells. If uh, it's not for the faint of heart, <laughs> it's not for the casual player. And if uh, you're trying to teach somebody this game, leave the oil wars out of it. Otherwise, you got a bunch of experienced players and you're looking for something new, you're looking to spice up the game, this is a good one to go for. So, take care everyone. General Hand Grenade out.